Yo, yo, yo! Welcome everybody to the Bonnie Z channel. I'm Bonnie Z and today we are doing Pack 20! Yay! Uh, the game that I invented where we play out some cards, have a battle, trainers get put on the cards. You, everyone, you, enter exclamation point Club Z right now for your chance to have a spot as a trainer. Let's get started. Um, we have a couple of announcements to make, some really exciting Thanks. Announcement number one! Car got fixed, let's go! Um, super exciting, so Seb's off at daycare, Lily's off at school, it's book week, um, it, it, yes! Yes! <laughs> I did it! I made it through! Um, Bonsai got repotted because it is spring now, well it's not really technically spring, but Mother Nature is telling me it's spring because I saw some cherry blossoms uh, flowering, some trees flowering, there were some daffodils a neighbor planted. They're all sprouted and flowering. So I was like, right, let's go. Today it's overcast, but it is 17 degrees outside and it is not cold. Walked outside in a t-shirt and I was very happy about that. So, repotted bonsai. He has a new pot. Oh my goodness, there's so much to get through. I've got heaps more Disney cards to open. We've still got the album we still need to fill. Oh my goodness, guys. Still need to fill this album. Dog. Uh Bonsai's a big boy now. Angry. Look at him. He survived winter. It's totally normal for all the leaves to be falling off, so don't panic. He's still green, so he's still alive. Um, but this is Bonsai's new pot, and basically the plan is with the Bonsai tree. So he's going to grow here in this corner quadrant, so it's going to tree. I'm going to prune it to come over into this corner. And then from there, I'm going to have some little Pokemon. I'm going to find some miniature Pokemon. And I'm going to have them sleeping up against the tree. I was thinking of having like a Snorlax here um, with an apple on his tummy. And then having like a Pikachu and a Machop. Maybe a couple of starters just like playing here. I'm going to do some like grass moss as well. And then the bonsai is just going to grow around the Pokemon theme down here. But right now, he's just in recovery stage. He's recovering from winter. I probably planted him a little bit too late last year. But he survived. So it's uh, it's book week in Australia, which means the kids got all dressed up. I'll post a photo of that up on our Instagram of the kids dressed up. Lily went as Bluey and Sebi went as Newt Scamander from Fantastic Beasts. So yeah, good fun. This community is all about shaping, passing, sharing, uh, you know, when one stream ends, we pass the chat onto another stream so it doesn't just die, you know, you're always going to be continually, it's like a big snowball, we all just hand, go from one to another, and, and we do our best to try and help out the smaller channels as well that are just starting out, maybe hitting that 1,000 sub goal, so, all right, Mr. Donuts is going to sell Psyduck Pokemon Donuts this year, look at the donuts, they're so cute. Aww. Oh, they're so cute. I don't think there's an actual photo of the Psyduck Donuts, but in a press release on August 21st in the US, Mr. Donut will be working with the Pokemon Company for the sixth time this winter. A Pokemon-themed donut and Bundell will be available sequentially from early November 2023 to the Mr. Donut locations around Japan. Yes! Um, this year's campaign will be called the Azure Free Relax and a Good Night campaign. Wow, how much does that scream Pokemon sleep app? Donuts and gift sets are sold in advance from early November and on days of new anniversary. Ticket set will be sold in advance from late December. These sold out last year. Like, people were going insane. Um, sell donuts in Psyduck's image. So cute. Uh, Polygon and Courtyard Partner to simplify trading of Pokemon cards. Polygon, a blockchain company, has joined forces with Courtyard to enable the trading of real-life Pokemon cards on the blockchain. This partnership aims to streamline the process of buying and selling these COVID collectibles. Traditionally, Pokemon cards could be purchased from physical shops or through online platforms such as eBay. However, the risk of scams on these platforms has a major concern for buyers. The collectible market with a current value of $458 billion. But, but, but. Uh, is expected to reach $628 billion by 2031. To tap into this growing market, many Pokemon companies have started offering digital equivalents of the cards using regulated custodians to facilitate redemption. 
Um, to trade Pokemon cards using Polygon, users can visit the Courtyard website and create an account. From there, they can browse available cards and make payments using either fiat or cryptocurrency. Once the purchase is complete, the digital cards are sent to the user's wallet. These digital cards can also be traded on the NFT marketplaces like OpenSea. So, wow. Pokemon are now going into, like, crypto world, guys. Like, they're just going to take over the world. Pokemon's going to take over the world, and we should all just sit down, relax, and just take my money. Just... How Pokemon Scarlet and Violet compared to past games with difficulty. Also, guys, just to mention that all the links to these news articles will be in the description after the scream, stream and in the description of the video down below. Thank you, everyone, for the news articles, the people who wrote it to GN24, um, Gamer Shard, Game Rant, Comic Book Con, uh, Dexerto.com, uh, Gamer Shard. I think that's it. I normally have a Pokemon.com, like the official site news, but there was nothing on there for today. So, um, yes. Thank you everyone for that. So, how are Pokemon Scarlet compared to past games with difficulty? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet offer an open world design, allowing players to explore the Paldia region in a non-linear fashion with three different story routes. The game's lack of level scaling creates a difficulty imbalance with players potentially encountering NPCs that are much stronger or weaker than their own team. The freedom to explore Paldeo can lead to overleveling or being underleveled for certain challenges affecting the overall difficulty of the game. Have you experienced any of these? What are your thoughts on how, like, difficulty with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet compared to any past games of Pokemon that you've played? Especially, I suppose, X and Y would probably be a very good comparison for Scarlet and Violet because it, um, sorry, Sword and Shield, because it was that similar sort of behind the character 3D new animation type of thing rather than being on the bird's eye. The Scarlet and Violet set forth with their new approach with the open world design, letting the Paldea region be explored in a non-linear fashion, which was new, which was nice, offering up three different routes for story progression. So I suppose it wasn't true open world really, if you think about it. There was still three like main kind of things it still directionalized you, but it did it in a way where you chose which one to do first, I guess. Um, did you guys like that in the game? Did you not like that? Let me know. The Pokemon Company will never stop making new Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> the Pokemon Company has no plans to slow down the creation of new Pokemon species. Earlier this month, comicbook.com and other outlets had the opportunity to speak with Takoto Utsunomiya, the chief operating officer of the Pokemon Company, in a wide-ranging interview that included a rare admittance that Pokemon Company was looking for ways to balance the steady cadence of new game releases with ensuring that the quality of those games stayed the same. During the interview, GameSpot's Jason Finelli asked whether there would be a point that the Pokemon Company would consider the franchise to have too many Pokemon, especially with the franchise now exceeding the 1,000 Pokemon mark. Uh, and quote, I think the Game Freak needs to have that ability or kind of development capability to always be producing new creatures and coming up with new ideas. That was a quote from Takato. It looks like we're just going to keep getting Pokemon. Yes. Good point. If you think about how many living creatures there are in the world, there's something over hundreds of thousands of different species. So uh, I think we have a long way to go and Pokemon is quite safe. No anti gun Cubs Pokemon Go Fest. Global 2023 Remote Raid Limit and fans are thrilled. Let's go. Uh, there will be no Remote Raid Limit for Pokemon Go Fest 2023. Yes! Pokemon Go Fest 2023 has been a massive su success with festivities across London, Osaka, and New York City. However, the in-person events have suffered from a fair bit of issues, like network issues that plagued some players in New York City. <laughs> if you couldn't make any in-person GoFest day, just can still participate in the global event from August 26th to August 27th. And this will mark Diane Ancy's debut in the mobile applications. So that's super exciting. And this here is a post on Instagram. Get your battle party ready trainers. There'll be no remote raid limit on August 26th and 27th. To celebrate Pokemon Go Fest 2023 global, keep in mind that you're still only able to hold a limited number of remote raid passes in your item bag at one time. So it's not limited, but it kind of is still. That's okay. The Pokemon trading card game artist spotlight Neo Kimuru debut. Let's go. In addition to the Southern Islands, the Kimura cards are drawn from these postcards, whose names are tropical islands set in the larger markets. First, the jungle postcard. Neo Kimura is the driver of many cards. Um, here's a postcard for Beach. 
The C postcard goes on next to that. The other four cards that were in Southern Islands, Primate, Venomoth, Vileplume, Lickitung, Wurtle, and Winden. Executor, Lapras, Murrow with Arati, Arati and other and the other side, the Tentacruel with a dragon in the distance behind it. The first of the famous Dragonites running in the distance. Can you imagine a more famous debut? Oh, so is there no photo? So the artwork was originally made into smaller postcards, but then it was separated into Pokemon cards. So the images on the cards make one big postcard. Let me know, chat. Let me know. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, how to follow and create routes in Pokemon Go. This is more going to be an article for you guys to go check out. Links are in the description. How to follow and create routes in Pokemon Go. If you're not sure how to do it and you're still a little bit stuck, um, the link will be in the description. The sources here are Pokemon Go official website and Niantic. Um, so thank you so much for Gamishard.gg for that article. And it's by John Nowacki for the 21st of August. So this is... This is uh, one day old. Raid Hour, a guide to Pokemon Go's legendary raid event. Again, Raid Hour is the five star legendary raids. Uh, it's initially It was initially called the, uh, the Lunch Hour. The event was later renamed Raid Hour and rescheduled to Evening. So it's typically around 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, for local time. And again, there's sources here. There's some information on how to participate in Raid Hour. You need to obtain a road pass from a gym with an active raid. That's very important. Uh, but if you want to go read how you do that, I have all the information there for you. And that is it for the news.